Hey guys, what's going on? It is Dokana here, and welcome back for another Top 5 Tuesday. And this week we're going to be doing the Top 5 Best Agility Support Units in-game. Now, before we go ahead and start the Top 5, let's just go ahead and lay out some ground rules. Any agility card can be used, that means any super card, any extreme card, free-to-play card, a summonable card. This is for any agility card in the game. We will not be taking leader abilities into consideration. We will not be taking super attacks into consideration. We will specifically be taking only passive skills. And perhaps we'll be taking in link skills, uh, depending on if we uh, have two tied cards or not. Uh, nothing else is really going to be uh, taken into consideration. Essentially, the goal of this is to find out which cards do we want to keep out on rotation that will benefit all the cards on the field while they're on rotation so that means they don't need to link with anyone in order to make the team better just their passive just them being on the field is good um so without further ado let's go ahead and start talking about each of the cards now let me just pre-state that i will not be going over the cards in order i'm just going to be going over them in random order and then i'm going to rank them afterwards all right so let's go ahead and talk about it. this is going to be quicker just because i'm only going to be talking about their passive skills um, so let's go ahead and start with the Entrusted Mission Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Yu. His passive skill, Strength to Defend the Earth. Agility and Strength Key plus 2. It's a flat out Agility and Strength Key plus 2 for all everyone who's on the field at that time. He technically does have a Doken Awakening, but because this is JP, that's the JP Doken Awakening, we're not going to be taking that into consideration. If I didn't already state this, um, this is for the global side at this time. Um, this was not for the JP side. The next card is Rampage of Destruction, Android number 18 from the future. Her passive skill, War Dominance, changes physical key to agility key. Attack plus 20%. Now the attack plus 20% is not going to be taken into consideration because it's for herself, but her passive skill is she's an orb changer, so that's that. She has no Doken Awakenings at this time. Now the next one is going to be, I'm going to go over his base form first, and then we're going to talk about where to get him. So the first one is going to be the base form of All Out Charge Super Saiyan Goku. He is available from Baba's Treasures. Um, his undoken form is key plus two for all allies when HP is 50% or above. He Doken Awakens in the proof of tough training Super Saiyan Goku. His new passive skill is power to survive a crisis all allies key plus two and attack plus 20% when HP is 50% or above. Uh, so that's pretty damn good, you know, passive skill in my opinion. Next one is going to be another Doken Awakening, but he's a summonable unit. It's the Fruits of Training, Super Saiyan 2 Goku. His original passive skill is key plus three when HP is 99% or below. Uh, name of it is Supersonic. He Doken Awakens into long-awaited serious duel Super Saiyan 2 Goku. His new passive skill is Unbelievable Speed, key plus three for all allies when HP is 99% or below. The next card is Warrior Girl with Strong DNA Bullpan. Her passive skill is Weight of Expectation. All allies key plus 3 when HP is 50% or more. She does have a Doken Awakening, and she Doken Awakens into Proud Bloodline Bullpan. Um, her passive skill is now Grand Wish, key plus 3 for all allies when HP is 30% or above. Now, I did want to state real quick that there is one honorable mention I just want to I'll let you guys know about. Um, he did not make it on the list, unfortunately, but he is there as a good unit to have as a support, in my opinion. Um, it's Masterful Technique, Master Roshi, Max Power. Now, he does Doken Awaken from Martial Guidance, Master Roshi. His passive skill is Master's Teaching, key plus two for all allies when HP is 50% or above. The reason why I didn't put him in the top five ranking is as while he does give key to all allies, he, that restrictive of HP is 50% or above. It wasn't really that great. I didn't want, you know, it's very, you can keep your HP over 50%, but it requires items or healing. Um, it, it's just not idealistic compared to who, uh, who the other units that we have. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the rankings. In last place is Proof of Tough Training Super Saiyan Goku. A uh, reason why he came in last place is because of that restrictive passive skill. All allies keep plus 2 and attack plus 20% when HP is 50% or above. It's really unrealistic to try and keep your uh, HP your health points above 50%. Uh, you can do it, it's just not ideal. You're going to constantly need to heal yourself in order to do that. Uh, the only reason why he was on those lists is because he made it just above the Master Roshi, because he also gave that additional attack. 
uh, fourth place goes to Rampage of Destruction Android number 18. Now she doesn't have a restrictive pass. Uh, her passive skill changes physical key to, intel to agility key. So while she is a decent card, the only thing about her is she's really only useful, typically only useful for one of cards on the field depending on how the orbs line up. It's really hit or miss. Uh, she made it to the list, but she's definitely on the lower rung. I kind of had to decide between her and the Super Saiyan Goku, which place that I want to rank each of them. But because her passive isn't restricted, and it can come uh, be a lot more beneficial to the team, because it's not just two key, it's giving multiple key depending on how many orbs are there. Uh, but yeah, she's on the list, and she is my fourth place pick. The next one is Entrusted Mission Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Yu. His passive skill is an unrestricted agility and strength type key plus two. Now, I like that, key plus two, all the time, while he's on the field, makes it easier, but that benefits you if you're running a super team, because he is super sane. Uh, again, he does have that Doken Waking form, it's just worth it to mention um, that his Doken Waking form has a agility key, um, uh, sorry, agility and strength key plus two, um, plus attack and defense plus 25%, um, so he's a little bit more viable. I kind of think I would still keep him where he is, even if we included his Doken. Um, and second place is Proud Bloodline Bullpen. Now her passive skill is Grand Wish, key plus three for our allies when HP is 30% or above. Now, yes, it is restrictive, but at 30% or above, it is really, really not that bad. Um, it's very, a lot more viable to keep your health over 30%, because once you go under 30%, chances are you're going to want to heal yourself anyway. At least that's my take on it. I mean, once you go under 30%, yeah, I'm, I know I'm using the sense of being or anything like that. Uh, hell, I'm usually using items when I go under 60%. But she is my second place pick. And last but not least, the number one pick that I have is the long-awaited Serious Duel Super Saiyan 2 Goku. His passive skill is key plus three for all allies when HP is 99% or below. Now... I don't know why the heck they kept that 99% or below restrictive passive on there, but you know what? Oh well. Um, you're almost guaranteed to always have under 99% health. Your enemy's always going to attack you, unless you're doing a stun team, and this is agility, so it doesn't really make sense there. Your enemy's always going to attack you. It's 99% or below, so you just need to take one hit, and his passive is active. I think the only time it won't be active is if like your enemy's stunned, you use a sense of beam, and then he shows up. Or if you didn't take any pod damage for running the map, and you start off with him on the field. Outside of that, his passive is always on. It's always there. It's worth it. And what makes it better is, you know, he is a Super Saiyan. So he has the like Golden Warrior Saiyan Warrior is Super Saiyan's Maya Maya Link. So he'll link up with a lot of the good, you know, units on an agility team. But again, we're really not taking that into consideration for this, for this video. But that's the rankings, guys. Um, let me know what you think. Do you think I left anyone out? Do you agree with my rankings? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. The good thing about support units is you can you get up three of them on a team because you always have the two that are rotational and then the one that's off. So it's not that bad. I mean, assuming you're going to use your friend lead um, on, on rotation all the time. So you could technically throw on the long-awaited serious dual Super Saiyan 2 Goku the Proud Bloodline Bullpen, and the Entrusted Mission Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Youth, if you want, and you have all three of them on there, and you're always going to have some type of key buff. Um, I just chose the key buffs of key plus three um, over all the other ones, just because it's better be getting super attacks off moral. But again, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for joining me here. Remember to hit that sub button if you're new here, and I will catch you guys on the next Top 5 Tuesday.